Good evening. Let's go ahead and find that hymn book. 343 is where we're going to start off tonight. 343 is Springs of Living Water. And once again, if you're willing, stand with me to start off tonight. 343. Receiveth sinful men, five, four, five. Let's go to the Lord in prayer this evening. Father, thank you so much that uh, we can gather once again. What a blessing it is to our hearts to be able to fellowship one with another and to know the love of God in hearts and lives. We pray you might bless tonight. I pray that you might empower, bring the uh, uh, Spirit of God that you might lead and direct and uh, minister to hearts. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. All righty, go ahead and be seated.
Somebody told me a while ago we was going to get another two or three or four inches. I don't know what they said. Uh, are we excited yet? Huh? It's time. <clears throat> it's time we all buy four-wheel drive tractors. Isaac. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, anyways. Let me see. I saw that the ladies' Bible study got canceled because of snow. Has that been rescheduled or just going to wait till next month? Hmm? Okay. All right. And, uh, of course, we've been mentioning Chesley Howell will be with us 21st of February, and he's going to Columbia. I, uh, <clears throat> I'm going to a conference next week, and uh, I, I'm really... I'm very depressed on where I got to go. It's Fort Lauderdale. But, uh, I might be able to handle it. I'm not sure. <clears throat> hmm? Bring some home. <laughs> uh, King James Bible Conference, and it's a council. And there's a, uh, probably about 15 guys there that are involved with this, and then of course there are a lot of other folks that come in. Uh, Brother Ziner would be one of those. I'd be uh, spend some time with him. I appreciate that. And uh, Brother Stringer that was with us earlier this year, I've got to know. And um, a few other men, it's just, uh, it, it, for me, it's very exciting. The problem is it was, uh, uh, it starts on Monday morning. Guys from Iowa, it's a little bit difficult. And uh, I didn't want to miss any of it. And uh, the only flight I could get out of is very early afternoon. So, uh, that's a tricky thing. I take off at 115, but didn't cost me anything. So I had miles for that, which I'm thankful for. And uh, so I had to pay for tax, I think, or something. I don't remember what else. Insurance. So if I get sick, I get my money back or my miles back, whatever. I don't know what it is. Anyways. <clears throat> um, just wanted to know, let you know that I will be doing, be getting back Wednesday afternoon, I believe, uh, if I remember correctly. So looking forward to that. Appreciate your prayers in that, that uh, I not get too hot while I'm down there. Oh, amen. Some of you might notice my daughter's left this week. She and, she and her daughter, <clears throat> and they've gone to Arizona to see another daughter and left Dom here in the cold. She picked a really good week. <laughs> so I hear it's 80 degrees down there. Oh, they really rough it. I was talking to Matt the other day. He's in, you know, in Alabama, and he says, "Man, it really got cold down here." I just thought, what happened to this tough guy? It got down in the 30s. Uh, and the wind was blowing. It was 30 mile an hour winds. I said, Matt, that's normal up here. He says, I know, but I've become kind of babyish now. So anyways, all right, I think I've done enough damage here tonight. Uh, Sean, you want to bail me out and come and lead us in song? When you're done, Chasen will come and preach to us. and. Then uh, we're all going to your house afterwards for supper. So that's going to be exciting, amen. I hear you got quite a driveway out there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> all right. All right, 690, please. 690, sweet by and by.
How firm a foundation, 601. February evening in the midst of a pandemic called the Super Bowl. For those of you who are missing church for the Super Bowl, I pray to God that the reception on your television will go out unless you're watching our services online. And all God's people said, Amen. I have boycotted the national no fun league for the last three years so I couldn't tell you who plays for who anymore I can care less and my life's been so much better for it that's just that's free stuff just in case you guys want to know go ahead and turn your Bibles to the book of Genesis chapter 2 Genesis chapter 2 this evening last week we dealt with um, really what a young lady should be looking for in a man as she seeks to uh, get married. And I stressed last week, it needs to be a man, uh, not a boy, because there is a stage in a person's life where they do need to grow up and they do need to mature. And hopefully as they do those things, they'll begin to figure uh, life out. I had someone come up to me after the services last week and uh, begin to uh, add some other things in there as well. And I liked uh, the comment that was on there. They said, would you consider for another stipulation for uh, a man to have would be for him to have a job? And I say, yes, that would be <laughs> a great benefit uh, to that individual. Um, I learned something from a friend of mine. He passed his daughter on to... Uh, my wife's cousin, they got married, I think, two years ago. He's a tremendous young man. And uh, when he went and asked uh, for her hand in marriage, the father said to him, I will, I will give you my blessing if you fulfill these things. He knew that he was saved and all those things. He said, there's one thing that uh, uh, is important for me that I think that uh, I, I, I want for you to f fulfill. And he says, okay, what's that? He goes, I want you to have $10,000 in your checking account. 
And I thought to myself, wow, that's uh, a pretty good deal for uh, the father to say that about uh, um, to this young man. And he fulfilled that. He uh, worked his tail end off and uh, saved up his money, got $10,000 into his uh, uh, checking account. And uh, father gave him a blessing to uh, marry his daughter. By the way, he did it rather quickly because uh, he knew what was important to him. So uh, Jeff's turning around looking at Isaac right now. <laughs> yes, Isaac. I actually told your father all that. So, anyway, we're going to look at tonight what men are to look for in a woman. And uh, we're going to go to uh, Genesis chapter number 2. And we're going to begin reading in verse uh, number 18. Uh, let's read uh, a couple of these verses, and then I will go to the Lord in prayer. It says, And the Lord God said, It is not good that a man should be alone. I will make him a helpmeet for him. And out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. And Adam gave names to all cattle and to the fowl of the air, and to every beast of the field, but for Adam there was not found a helpmeet for him. And the Lord God caused, caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept, and he took one of his ribs, and closed up the flesh instead thereof. In the rib which the Lord God had taken for man, made he a woman, and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones, and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, because she was taken out of man." Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. Let's have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we again are thankful for this night you, you've allowed us to be here. We are uh, grateful, even though uh, we don't, some of us don't like the snow and the cold, but God, uh, uh, I'm thankful that you've given us a place of refuge, and we can come into these buildings uh, church or homes and uh, be able to have heat and uh, be able to sit in comfort. And so we thank you for the blessings that you have provided us uh, during these times. And God, I pray that uh, uh, as it's cold outside, that you would uh, uh, continue to uh, work in our midst tonight, that you would just uh, watch over us and, and give folks safety as they go home as well. Speak to us now, Lord, and we ask you these things in your name. Amen. Marriage, as you guys know, is a very serious business uh, between a man and a woman. And uh, not often enough is it taken serious today between men and women. Um, today we live in a society where uh, most people would want to uh, give in rather easily. They don't want to put up a fight. Uh, they don't think that their spouse is worth the investment uh, for them to uh, continue down the path of marriage. And uh, I say, woe to you, because uh, you need to take some direction from God's word. Will you inquire some hard times through marriage? Yes, you will. Uh, that is a fact. It happens. But one thing that we need to do as we go, before we go down this path, is we need to be in search for the right person. Last week, we dealt with a man. We saw that uh, Cain and Abel were two boys that uh, had an offering before the Lord, God had respect only unto one. And so we begin to go down that path. Now we're going to go down a path for the woman tonight. What men should look for in a woman? Through creation, God has blessed man with the creation of a woman. And all God's men in here tonight would say amen to that. Uh, you need to say amen. If not, your wife needs to nudge you with her elbow as hard as you can so that I can hear you at least grunt for not saying amen. God has blessed man through creation with a woman. Amen. And you didn't redeem yourself. <laughs> but he's, redeemed, he's uh, blessed us with that creation. Some may say man was cursed. However you look at it, God created a woman for a very specific reason. That reason is found in verse number 18. And that is, let's read it again. It says, And the Lord God said, It is not good that man should not be alone, and I will make him a helpmeet for him. The woman was created for man to be man's helper. 
to be his complement, if we can use that word. She is to be his helper. It's very interesting, after God said, let us make man in our image, look what happens in verse number 19. I found this very interesting this past week. So after God says it's not good for man to be alone, let's, let's make him a help meet. Verse number 19, you would think that the woman would be upon the scene. We don't see that take place. I never really noticed this before. But let's read this so that you can catch this. And it says, and out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field. Do you not find that interesting? After God said, let us make man a helpmeet, that God goes out and begins to create the beast of the field. Then he creates every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what, we would, what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. So during that time of creation, God gave Adam a very specific job, and that was for Adam to go out through creation with the beast of the field, the fowl of the air, and give them names. What a task that Adam had. Uh, it sounds very easy to a lot of us because we look at a cat and what comes to our mind? A cat, obviously. Where did that come from? That came from Adam. came from a job that God gave him. And so we recognize those things because of that very thing. But at verse number 20, it says, And Adam gave names to all cattle, and to the, and to the fowl of the air, and to every beast of the field. But at the end of this verse, it goes on and says, But for Adam, there was not found a helpmeet for him. So Adam was still yet alone. Adam was still, in a sense, was helpless because he didn't have a woman that, was, that needed to be around him that God wanted for him. So the animal kingdom would uh, not be able to connect with Adam the way that a woman would be able to. By God's design, a woman was to be a helper to the man. By the way, that should show us men that as God says a woman is to be a helpmeet, what would that think for you men what your job is towards your wife? That job is very specific, and that is to train your wife. Would you not agree with me on that statement? If she is to be a helpmeet, how is she going to be able to know how to help if she doesn't have the knowledge of the situation? Well, that comes from the man. The man is going to have to train her, and that's going to require a lot of patience as well upon the part of a man. It's not within our natural state to be very patient with women. Would you women agree with that statement? I heard a few giggles. That's good. But, uh, men, we need to take the time to be a help and to be able to train women. So by design, God's uh, design for a woman is to be a help to the man. The man by nature has the ability to accomplish great and difficult tasks. We see something big in front of us, and we begin to figure ways out to be able to get that task done. But man is limited in some areas. He's not able to do all. There are some things that I cannot do, but my wife can do those things. And by her doing those things that I'm not able to do, what is she doing for me? She is being a helpmeet for me. She's complimenting me. She is completing me. And I appreciate those things. So man is not able to do all, nor can man comprehend all. I'm describing myself this evening. He is very able to think with his head, but to think with his heart, this is where men have a problem. We think with our minds. We don't think with our hearts. And so here comes a woman who is able to help us in that area. Because not only do we need to think with our minds, but we need to think with our hearts as well. And so by God's design for a woman to be a help me to us, she is going to be able to help us out in those areas. I'm going to give you a mistake that man generally tends to make when looking for a wife. And men make mistakes in this area. And they need to be cautious in this area because there's more to this than the outward appearance that I'm talking about. They begin to look on the outward appearance. In other words, they begin to look at her beauty. 
They begin to uh, be attracted to uh, the color of her hair, the, the makeup that she wears, and, and, and the clothes that she wears. They're attracted by the outward appearance. Men are drawn to things by looks. That's how men are designed. Meaning, it's more physical. It's a more physical attraction. That's what it means. A woman's outer beauty as she grows older. Women, please don't be mad at me for this statement. But as women begin to grow older, the beauty that they had as a young woman begins to fade. Meaning the outward appearance begins to go. To help you ladies out, the physical appearance that uh, a young man has at a very young age, he begins to develop the thing called muscles. And they begin to develop those things even further. As I said last week, the more you develop, the more it's going to fall as you get older. So we too as men begin to lose the outward appearance as well. The outward appearance is not what matters. What men need to focus on is the inward of the woman, the heart of the woman. That is where you begin to find the true beauty of the individual. But so often we're focused on the outward appearance. The outward appearance is deceiving. Let me ask you, young men, a question. When that young woman begins to take her makeup off, are you going to still find her attractive? That's when you begin to see the real person for who they are. And that is the truth of the matter. By the way, I think women, don't take this in the wrong way, but I think women are more beautiful without makeup. I, I really do. You, you, you don't need to uh, uh, dress yourself up. That's how God made you. Be, be, be excited how God made you. But if you decide to, as Pastor said a few weeks ago, to paint the old barn and paint it, that, that's fine. But we need to focus on the inward. By the way, I don't think of women's faces as barns. Just to throw that out there. I never have. I just learned that from Pastor. No, just kidding. <laughs> just trying to dig myself out of trouble, and I got myself more in trouble. But anyway, from Scripture... I believe what man needs to consider when seeking a spouse is one who is willing to be his helper. And I'm going to get into an illustration later on to help this uh, become more clear to us. I have come to the realization that I cannot do everything by myself. I've learned what I'm capable of and I've learned what I'm not capable of doing. And so with that realization, I have come to the understanding that I am in need of help. And so, because I am needed help, who am I to go to? The woman that God designed for me in marriage. She is my helpmate. And she helps me in so many ways in my life. And I get great help from her. I get great encouragement from her as well. One reason why marriages don't work or they need counseling is for this reason. They don't know how to work with each other. And one of the reasons why they don't know how to work with each other is because they do not know how to communicate with one another. We live in a different age today where we have cell phones. When I was dating my wife, we didn't have cell phones. I don't even think cell phones were uh, even invented at that time. And so with cell phones come the point of texting. What my wife and I did back in the day, we had phones and we had to actually talk to each other. And so with her living in Sioux City and me living in Council Blush, uh, we talked to each other quite, quite often to where uh, our phone bills uh, uh, would be uh, astronomical. I'm talking, I remember one time mom was telling me our, our phone bill was $350 for one month. And I will say this, it was great of my parents to pay that bill. Because it was well worth it. Thank you if I've never told you that before in my life. But one day I will plan on repaying you. Just tell me what dish you want for dinner and I'll bring it over. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> don't forget the interest. But there's no communication between spouses. Uh, we can go out to dinner on so many different occasions. As a matter of fact, Chris and I went out to dinner a couple weeks ago. 
and uh, out of all places, we're at Cracker Barrel. We're old enough now where Cracker Barrel's our place to go. It's our go-to place. You know, back in the young days, uh, Applebee's, that was, that was our place to go. I mean, we're hip, we're hanging out with the cool people, and now we're, we're with the older people. And uh, we're getting mashed potatoes and applesauce and uh, all those things that we don't have to chew very hard. Uh, but anyway, we, we were noticing as we're having dinner that a family came in. And uh, they had a couple kids with them. And during this whole entire time that we were there, they did not communicate with one another. Meaning, in other words, when we grew up at home, we all had a dinner time. It was 5 o'clock. You knew at the Springer household at 5 o'clock we were having dinner. Mom called all of us by names and says, time for dinner. We'd all gather around. And one of the times that I, I really appreciate about that time is we're able to set everything aside that day, and we're able to come in, we'd hold hands, and uh, not why we ate, just why we prayed. And uh, after we got done praying, we, we'd have our food. But that was a time for all of us to reconnect with one another because there's six kids. We all went our separate ways. But at dinner time, we're all right there, and we're able to rehearse the stories um, that we uh, uh, had that day. Why was that so important? Because that was a time for us to communicate with one another. We're able to have conversation with one another. I learned during that time what and how to get away with things that Jeff didn't know how to get away with. He mastered my craft for me, and I mastered Matt's craft for him. But uh, anyway, as we're sitting there at the dinner table, this couple that was there did not talk to one another. You know what was the problem? They had their cell phones out. And during that time, they would either be on their phones texting or playing their, their games, whatever they do, and they did not engage in conversation with one another. Communication is important when it comes to having a successful marriage. By the way, if you want your spouse to be your helpmeet, how is she to be your helpmeet if you do not communicate towards her? That's an important aspect in a marriage. So have communication. The woman compliments the man, and she completes the man. Why? Because she is the helpmeet. Where does a, a, woman, help, where does a woman help the man? Have you ever asked yourself that question? I've asked myself that many questions. The simple answer to this is, while a man is out in the field working... The wife is taking care of the household needs. See, there are things in a household that only a woman can do that a man doesn't have knowledge of. And that's not putting a woman down. That's putting a woman upon a pedestal. Because there are some things that a man just cannot comprehend. Most men would not know how to run a household without their wives. And, and that's the fact of the matter. But we live in a day and age where uh, the man no longer goes out into the workforce, and now it's the man and the wife. So it's a little bit different nowadays. But a wife has a tremendous responsibility inside the home. And the spouse, the, the husband, gives specific directions throughout that day how uh, the household is to be ran, and she's got to keep those things up. She takes care of those needs. That's an important task. There are some things that I cannot do inside the house because my wife has such great knowledge of how to handle those things. You might be thinking that I'm not being politically correct about women at this point in time because women are supposed to be equal with men. I'm just going to say this. There are jobs that only a man can do, and there are jobs that only a woman can do. It's not about being politically correct. It's just about making the correct statement, to be honest with you. And uh, there are some things that I don't want to do that a woman can do. And there are some things that a woman doesn't want to do that a man can do. By the way, I don't want to have labor pains. That's what God has blessed a woman with. And women consider that a blessing. And as we see our wives go through that, we're thinking, how is that a blessing? They're in such tremendous pain. But there are some things that only a woman can do. Unfortunately, there are men out there who have no ambition in life to do anything. And therefore, the woman in that particular home has more responsibilities than the man. And that's very sad. It's sad to say that there are some pretty pathetic 
lazy men who do not take the advantage of helping their wife. That is sad. And while they do this, they run their wives into the ground. I have seen women who are completely exhausted because they have a husband that doesn't realize what and who she is married to, and they take that word help meet literally, and that woman ends up doing everything for that man. By the way, it's not your wife's job to pick out your clothes. Grow up. Pick out your own clothes and your own socks. My mom got us trained at a very early age, even to the point we started doing our own laundry. But it's sad that we have these types of men. And if this describes you, then shame on you. Wake up and be a man. Your wife is a helpmeet to you. Don't take advantage of her. I'm going to throw this out here because we think a woman's job in the home is meaningless. And it's not meaningless any way, shape, or form. How about trying to take care of the kids after already spending 12 hours on your feet taking care of the rest of the household that day? Try taking care of putting dinner on a table when you're fatigued and sometimes even sick. It's very difficult. Try doing the laundry that needs to be done when things begin to pile up and you don't have enough time in the day to do those things. Try cleaning the house and try taking you of yourself to look presentable to when your spouse comes home. See, a woman's job is very difficult. It's not an easy task. And so often, they don't even get a break from those very things. It's continuous 24-7. I can recount many times in my head, as my mom has gone through a very difficult day, uh, taking care of the things at the house, and then go to bed at night and to be awoken up many times taking care of a sick kid. A wife's job is very difficult. And most do it with a very gracious attitude. I never once heard my mom say, get over it, you pathetic, sick kid. Just go to bed, take a couple aspirin, and you'll be fine in the morning. No, I found my mom on many occasions putting a cold rag on my head as my head's hung over in the toilet, comforting me, taking care of my needs. Most dads don't do those things. I do remember my dad, however, doing that one time for me. And that just melted my heart that day. Because I thought to myself, wow, that's mom's job. I'll, I'll never forget that. But moms have a very difficult job. A wife is taken advantage of on many different occasions. Men, she is your help meet. She is not and was not designed to be your personal slave. And that's how, unfortunately, some men treat their wives. And guess what? When you come home from work, how about doing this? How about take your turn and take care of the kids and relieve your wife so that she can have some time to herself to recuperate, to be more energetic, to go about the next day? And by the way, Taking care of the kids is not shipping them off to the grandparents. You wonder why most kids have more respect for their grandparents? It's because they're not around their parents to begin with. They're around their grandparents the majority of the time. That's sad. The second thing that a man looks for in his future wife is one who has not allowed herself to be touched by another. Turn to your Bibles to the book of Hebrews chapter 13 this evening. The book of Hebrews chapter 13. In verse number uh, four, as we read here, it says, Marriage is honorable in all, and the bed undefiled. But whoremongers and adulterers God will judge. 
The Bible here tells us that a marriage is honorable in all, and the bed is undefiled. This here is talking of two people who have saved themselves for each other. You know, it is a rarity in our world today, even amongst believers, to where they save themselves for each other for marriage. And when a man finds a wife of this nature, he finds a good thing. And when a, man, a woman finds a, a man of this nature, she's finding a good thing. So often today, many men and men, many women, well, yeah, men and women, women and women, yeah, it's a true statement because that's what takes place. That's not what I meant to say. But so often today, many women and men come to the marriage with baggage, meaning they have defiled the bed. Again, as I said last week, courtship is not a buffet style. But that's what our world is used to. That's what we are accustomed to. And you want to know why we are used to that, we have become accustomed to that? It's by the very shows that we allow ourselves to watch. It is so true. The more that we watch these shows, types of, of things in there, the more we get accustomed to it, the more it becomes natural to us, and we just accept it. Dating is not a buffet style. You're not going to line up a bunch of men for one woman and she goes and picks the flavor of the week. And after that week's over, she's going to go back and pick another flavor for the next week. That's not how it was designed. But yet that's what takes place in our world. With that being said, this will bring up a lot of hard times in a relationship down the road. It also creates a lack of trust. The last thing that we want to do is to bring into a marriage a lack of trust. Because what begins to take place is we begin to question every move and every motive. And then once that begins to take place, there is a constant battle with one another because of a lack of trust on each other's life. Let me put it to you in this way. I want you to think about this for a little bit. And it might get just a little bit graphic for some. But if you are not for sale, then why advertise yourself? That's a true statement. That hit, statement hit me hard a few years ago when I heard that out of my own daughter's mouth. I thought to myself, where did you learn and hear this from? She goes, that's what the preacher said at camp. Dad, I'm not for sale. So I'm not going to advertise myself. Well, amen. Amen. A few weeks ago, pastor talked about the modesty of a woman. Let me just sum it up for you. Why dress in such a way that draws attention to your body? If you have to get into clothes by jumping off of your house, then there might be a problem. And if you don't get that statement, then let me say this. Stop wearing such clothes that are such form-fitting. What you are doing to the mind of the man, you're causing the mind of the man to wonder. And you're causing that man's mind to wonder. And once that man's mind begins to wonder, lust begins to set in. And many men begin to act upon that lust. If you are not for sale, don't advertise yourself. I'm going to be blunt about this. I've seen a lot of women over in Omaha that advertise themselves. Pastor told us a story in Ohio. He saw women that advertise themselves. It's not something to be associated with. What you might not realize, not one, just one man is drawn to you, but several men are. God designed you for one man. Don't advertise yourself for other men. I said this earlier, men are drawn by things visually, so dress properly. Before you knew, know it, nudity will be the new thing. Because the imagination can't take it no more, because everything is such form-fitting, that'll be the next thing. By the way, I'm at an age now where 
The more loose clothes I wear, the better I feel. To be honest with you, I don't like form-fitting things on myself. Maybe when I was 10, but I'm no longer 10. Ladies, what God has blessed you with is for your husband's eyes only. You're not for sale. Don't become the center of attention by your sexual dress. It was such a joy this past year to watch a beautiful relationship grow right in front of our eyes. And we're still watching that take place. They both came into the marriage by not defiling the bed. Meaning they didn't sell themselves out to anybody else. They waited for each other. It also came with very strict guidelines by the parents. I was somewhat involved with some of the conversations with my own brother, and I knew of the stipulations. I knew of the guidelines. And by the way, I agreed with every single one of them because it was right. Because what the parents were trying to do, they were trying to protect their daughter, they were trying to protect the man, and they were trying to protect the future marriage that was about to take place. They didn't want the bed to be defiled. So for months, <laughs> this was funny, Jalen was the third wheel. Jalen got to experience dating with those two. They couldn't go anywhere without Jalen. She had a lot of fun. But what most didn't see this at the wedding? I didn't see it until I watched the video clip later on. That's what my wife likes to do. She likes to go back and rewatch things and take pictures of, of funny moments. That's the crazy thing about our cell phones. You can take video, then off that video, you can take pictures. It's a pretty cool thing that we have. But Isaac, during the ceremony, released Jalen of her third wheel duties. I don't know, it was after the point where he said her, his vows and after... I can't remember that exactly. After he finally kissed his bride, he looks over to Jalen and he does this. You're done. You know, we laugh, but that was sweet. Because they're coming into a marriage and they're making it honorable. And they were accountable for those things. The bed is undefiled. That's a rarity in our world today. That's a rarity in our churches as well. It shouldn't be a rarity in our churches. It should be natural. And that being said, they have become a model for us to follow. We have seen them work together. Why have we seen them work together? Because in Genesis chapter 2, verse number 18, God says, and let us make... Man in our image. Well, he, after that he says, man needs a helpmeet. Let's make him a helpmeet. Isaac knew that he needed Lindsay in his life to be his helpmeet. Now they both have separate jobs. They both go out of their house every single day. They go their own separate ways. But during a harvest time, and now it's going to be during to the planting time, there's one thing that I've watched take place is they work together. Why do they work together? Because they are a helpmeet. By design, God created the woman to be a helpmeet to the man. And Lindsay has become a tremendous helpmeet to her husband. I don't know of any other woman that's in here tonight that knows how to drive a combine. The only one I know of is, is Lindsay. It's a great testimony to have. She's become that. Young people, and, I, and maybe some older people, what we need to see out of this marriage is their desire to be working together side by side. I enjoy doing some things with my wife. I shouldn't say some things. I enjoy doing all things with my wife. That's going to come back to haunt me later on. I know it. But uh, last year we during covid we decided to paint our living room and and i love painting it's just something i've always enjoyed to do jeff uh has taught me how to to paint 
And there is an art to it. Most people, when they paint, they go like this. They go this way, that way, and this way. And that's, that's not the correct way to paint because you'll see those lines uh, throughout your house. And uh, I have been criticized. I shouldn't say criticized. He's, he's helped me along the way. And uh, I, I appreciate those things. And this past week, we decided to, uh, to paint our bedroom. We, we bought some new furniture for our bedroom. And so we wanted to match the colors with it. And uh, uh, I decided, was it uh, Friday night or maybe yesterday? No, it was Friday night. And I said, Chris, I want you to come here. I want to show you how to paint without putting any tape upon the walls. Because that's what Jeff has taught me. I don't tape anything off. And uh, he's taught me to, how to use the brush. And so I can take that brush without any paint, and I can guide my brush and go along the very edge of this building and not get it upon the ceiling because of how I've been taught. And so I wanted her to see how he taught me. And so I brought her over and said, Hey, Chris, let me show you how Jeff has taught me so that you can know how to do this. And so I showed her real quick, and I don't think she was impressed with it. But uh, that's fine. But... But uh, anyway, it, it was fun just to show her that type of a thing. See, we're, we're each other's help meet. And uh, I was thankful just for that little bit of an opportunity uh, to do those things. It's fun to work side by side. Sometimes I'm, I'm not the greatest person to work with, and she would testify to that. Uh, but I enjoy working by her side. It's, it's a great uh, thrill to have. Finally, I'm not going to dwell on this too long. The next thing a man should be looking for is a woman who is willing to submit herself to him. We find that in Ephesians 5, verse number 22. Some men have asked me, men, many men have asked me, how do I get a wife to submit? I'm going to give you the answer that I always give them because I think it's so very true. I always follow up with this statement. A woman will never submit to the man until she sees the man submit to God. Men, if you want a wife that you're looking for, if you're not already married, if you want her to submit to you, then you must show her that you submitted to God. If she doesn't see that, she will never submit to you. By the way, let me throw this out there. Submitting is not a weakness. It's one of the biggest strengths of the woman. If a man is able to submit to God, his house will be in order. You know why we have a lot of problems in our marriages today? For that very last statement. The man's house is not in order. One, probably because he's looked for the wrong woman. Doesn't realize that she's his helpmate. Has a woman who uh, has a lot of baggage in her life or... Uh, one who's probably not submissive, and so therefore the household's not in order. These are some key things that I believe that uh, young men, as they begin to uh, seek for their future spouse, are some very good qualities that you need to be looking for. Is she going to be my helpmate? Is she going to be submissive? Is, she's gonna, is she going to be honorable? Those are, those are the things that you need to be looking for. Last but not least, you need to pray. I said this last week about uh, the man. Uh, you need to be praying for the man and, and vice versa. If you're the woman, you need to pray for the man. If the man, you need to be praying for the woman. And uh, I would encourage you to do those things. By the way, <laughs> don't just settle on the first one. If there's no peace in your life, keep praying. Keep praying. Because you might miss out on what God has for you. And that's such a true statement. Well, that being said, let's have a word of prayer and uh, we'll be dismissed. We'll let you guys go home and uh, watch the remainder of the Super Bowl if that's what you choose to do. But as for me and my house, <laughs> I'm not going to. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this evening that you've given us. Again, God, is you've given me the privilege to uh, be able to be a help uh, in, in this area of uh, of courtship. Lord, next week we're, we're going to take it a little bit further. And uh, God, I pray that you uh, continue to uh, give me the wisdom and, and the area uh, how you want me to go. Uh, help me to seek you on this. God, I, again, I, I thank you uh, for my wife that you have given me. 
She has helped me uh, to become the man that I am today. And God, I thank you for her strengths, and I even thank you for her weaknesses. Because God, she is exactly who you designed her to be for me. She is my helpmeet. She is my friend. She is my lover as well. And she is the mother of my daughter. And I thank you so much. God, I pray as we go forth into this uh, area, I pray, Lord, that you uh, continue to speak to us, continue to minister to us. Give us safety as we travel home this evening. Uh, bring us back this week. And, and we ask you these things.